Hey everyone, CliffWow here, back with another video. Today I want to focus on what are the best items you can farm in the open world in Classic WoW right now. Now this is just after the Dire Mall release patch, about a week afterwards. And there's a f about four or five items that are fairly key and you can make quite a bit of gold off of. Now I know there's a lot of videos out there right now of how specific classes can do Dire Mall jump runs or Dire Mall tribute runs or Maraud in solo farming. The nice thing about this is you can grind these mobs as you level up on an alt or something like that and make a lot of gold in the process. And if you really are dedicated, you could probably grind out your epic mount just by sitting there on these mobs for level 40 all the way up to 60. So let's get into it. So the first item I want to talk about was essences. This is essences of water, air, earth, and fire. Now, if you're watching this video as soon as I post it, these actually recently went up in price, mainly because there's a few Dire Mall patterns that released that use these as part of their mats. A good example is Hide of the Wild, which is best in slot for basically every healing class, and that uses quite a bit of essences. We also have the 30 spell power enchant, uh, different robes like Robe of the Archmage, True Faith Vestments, Robe of the Void, uh, diff and a lot of other endgame enchants and patterns as well. So because they're used in so many of these items, a lot of these are best in slot for the specific classes. That means these essences command quite a high price. So let's start off with Essence of Water. This is a lot of the time one of the most expensive ones. You can farm this in a few places. First, there's Eastern Plague Lands. I find this one to be a little bit less busy. Um, there's it's basically any of the water spots, so any of these three water spots in Eastern Plague Lands. You can then find some of them in Fellwood as well. This is a little bit more populated up here in the Iron Tree Woods. There's a few spawn points, and these are the water elementals. And it gets fairly busy depending on the time and depending on the population of your server. Next is the Essence of Earth. Now, these are likely the most expensive essence on your server, and that's because they're just the hardest to farm. There's really only one reliable spot to grab these, and that's in the northwest corner here of Silithus, so expect these to be highly contested. Essence of Air are similar, but they just have a slightly higher drop rate than the Essence of Earth. Main spot, once again, is just below the Earth Elementals in northwest Silithus. You can also find them roaming a little bit outside of this corner, but Mainly if you want to just consistently farm these, it's in the northwest corner of Silithus once again. And again, this is usually a pretty contested spot because not only are these elementals here for farming, but they're also used for the first part of the Aqua Contestants quest for Molten Core, so a lot of people are here. Lastly, the Essence of Fire. Now, these are likely the cheapest Essence of the four on your server, and that's because you can get them from trash and molten core at a fairly high drop rate. So a lot of pug molten core runs will be posting these up on the auction house. There's a lot more competition, but if you just want to straight farm them and it is a lot of the time, maybe better than farming the other ones just because it's less contested. The best place to do this is right in the middle of Ungoro Crater. Uh, there's fire elementals here that have a fairly high drop rate of essence of fire and make sure you stick on the mountain rather than coming off of it because you might run into the devil sore mafia if you do. Next we have a fairly common farm. This is fell cloth. Now once again with the release of dire mall there's a few more patterns that utilize fell cloth. They're used in the creation of moon cloth as well to be able to make moon cloth bags and other patterns with moon cloth. Um, showing here just a lot of different patterns that fell cloth are used in and tailoring so they are a fairly important material um, there's a couple main spots to farm these the main contested spots will be in fellwood so you have the northwest corner of fellwood and then basically the bottom southwest corner of fellwood these are satyrs that are here there's also quests that you can get for them they're around the level 52 to 55 56 range there's also some satyrs in Ashara that you can farm, similar level, that will drop these fell cloth as well. Expect these to be fairly contested, but there is quite a fair amount of them, especially in the southwest corner of Fellwood there. I actually grinded on these from basically level 52 to like 55 on my Warlock and got somewhere around 50, 60, maybe even 70 fell cloth by the end of it. I ended up using quite a bit for my own robes and selling them as I went, but it's a pretty profitable way to just grind through levels because you do get these fell cloth drops fairly regularly. So those last couple were more common things to farm and they're a lot more contested spots. These next three will be a little bit less common, 
more obscure, you'll likely have less competition for these in the farming spots. So I'll start off first with the Golden Pearls. These are used mainly in the 30 Spell Power Enchant is where you're going to sell them. They're also used in True Faith Vestments for Priests. Now the main spot that I found to farm these is in the Island on Feralis. Now this is a great, great farming spot for your mid 40s, basically from about 42, 43 ish, all the way up to about 48, 49. You can grind straight on these mobs, do a little loop around the cave, it's perfect. I spent a ton of time here on my Warlock. It was a fantastic grinding spot. You can get 40 to 50k XP an hour if you're really fast. It's also great for melee, like rogues or warriors, because there are a lot of casters here. So if you can interrupt a cast, you're gonna do real damage and not take very much damage either. So this is a fantastic grinding spot for an alt, or if you're in that level range on your main, grind these out get the big mouth clams, open those up, and there's a fairly good chance to get a golden pearl. I mean, good meaning a couple percent, but that's pretty good when they're selling for somewhere around 18 to 20 gold each, at least on Feralina Alliance side. Next up is the Winterfall Firewater. Now this is a consumable used by physical DPS classes to really top up their damage for raid. And an important part of this is it only lasts 20 minutes and it also falls off on death. So they go through them fairly quickly. I know on my main, which is a rogue, I go through these quite a bit. I end up buying somewhere around 10 or so every Tuesday for raid. And I spend about two gold to three gold each on them because that's usually what they're going for. I probably should buy them a little bit earlier. Anyways, you can find them in winter spring, basically any of the fur bogs in winter spring. So you have the Northwest side here, you have the Southwest and also on the far East. Uh, usually the Western camps are a little bit less contested because the east side is usually farmed by people who are farming mount for the winter spring, uh, the frost saber mount. So you'll have a lot more competition there. Uh, but the west two camps are usually a little bit less busy. There is a quest for them, so you might run into some competition there. But these are around the early level 50s, 52 to 55 ish. So once again, it's a really good grinding spot for your early to mid level 50s. Grab the quest, get a lot of XP here, and also make a good chunk of gold. Lastly is the Larval Acid. This is a much less common item to see just around when you're farming. It's a little bit lesser known item as well. So a lot of the farming spots are a lot less contested than the others. But it's become very important because with the release of Dire Maul came the release of the Hide of the Wild pattern. This is again the best in slot healing cloak for basically every healer. And this requires eight of these larval acids. So these can be found from the Carrion Grubs and Carrion Devourers. These are the big worm looking mobs all over the Eastern Plaguelands. As you can see, I'll show a couple of maps here. They're basically everywhere. They're also yellow, so they're not aggressive, which is pretty helpful when you're trying to just grab one and you have a lot of these other aggressive beasts around. These range from about level 54 up to 57, 58-ish. So this is a great grinding spot for your like mid to late 50s. As you can see, I've kind of had a pattern here where you could start from your 40s and get all the way up to basically 60, grinding these out. Um, you'll also have beasts all around you in Eastern Plague Lands, and so just killing those will also give you just a good amount of gold just from getting the gray items on them. But these larval acids on these grubs or these devourers actually have a fairly decent drop rate, somewhere around 5 to 7% or so. So farming is out, if you do it quickly, before a lot of people get to it, you're probably going to make a lot of gold here. I at least have been on my server, and you likely will as well. So get on this before those people get out there and before you have a lot more competition for this because every healer is going to be looking for that cloak once a lot more people get the recipe. So that wraps up the five items I wanted to discuss and I just wanted to once again reiterate that this could be a really helpful method to hit your epic mount gold before you actually hit 60 because you could grind on the Nagas and Feralis, you could then go to the Satyrs, you could then go to the Furbolgs, you could then go to Eastern Plague Lands and go to the Worms. You could do this all the way from your early to mid 40s all the way up to 60 and have at least a thousand gold by the time you hit it if you're really dedicated to it and if you are on a class that can farm really quickly like say a hunter or a warlock and you're also less likely to get into these dungeon groups on those classes anyways so you may be stuck questing 
anyways on those classes, so why not just grind it out, maybe make a little bit less XP an hour, but be ready to not have to farm once you hit 60? I'd say it's a pretty good method of going about it. Anyways guys, that's all for this video. If you liked it, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'm happy to respond to basically everyone who asks any sort of question in the comments. Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash cliffwow. And I'll have another video coming up with a different way, very opposite from this, uh, to make gold and classic wow, so look out for that one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a good one.